I'll be hosting this masterclass for today. Uh, so my name is uh, Divya Jagwani. Um, I'm the Associate Director Enterprise Sales at Moengage, focusing in Indonesia and Southeast Asia. All right, so today's topic is how to onboard and retain customers. And to discuss with me today, we have two awesome people on board. Um, I'm just going to go around the table and introduce them. So we have uh, Julius Golosinda, Head of Commercial Business Intelligence at Zlingo. Hi, Julius. Hi, everyone. Nice to meet you all. I'm Julius. I'm from um, Zlingo. I head the commercial BI, so I look after uh, marketing analytics, uh, the marketing technology as well and CRM of Zilingo. Awesome, thank you, Julius. Nice to have you here. Then we have Kunal Singla, Regional Head Growth from The Parent Inc. Hi, Kunal. Hi, hi everyone. Uh, delighted to connect with all you guys. So uh, I'm working with Tickle Media and the focus area that I look into the growth of the market, both on the app, app side of it, where uh, I look in, uh, the growth from the organic and the paid acquisition, including the CRM and the partnerships as well. Thanks, Kunal. Thanks, Kunal, for, for being here today. So um, let's get started. Uh, before I begin, uh, anyone from the audience, if you have any questions at all, just feel free to put it on the chat box and we will answer your questions. All right. So to get started, I have a couple of questions, um, you know, regarding this around around this topic uh, for the both of you. Um, post that, we will have a quick uh, demo, a ten minute session, head by um, Fernando uh, uh, from our customer success team. All right, so let's get started. Um, so I think this first question is just to, to the both of you, right? In general, um, just want to understand like how has the whole uh, pandemic changed your whole customer acquisition as well as retention for your brand? Who wants to go first? Kanal, we can first? start. Oh yeah, it's okay. I'll, I'll <laughs> okay, Kanal, you guys so, go. Sorry. So yeah, I mean, uh, we have seen a uh, uh, change in the consumption behavior of the user during the pandemic. Uh, so so to tell you about, we are. Uh, mainly based in six markets uh, in Southeast Asia. And uh, each market has shown a very different trend in the pandemic. Just to give a very simple example that uh, when the pandemic goes up, like the COVID case is going up, we have seen the, the user retention numbers are going down, the cost of acquisitions are increasing, right? And it also impacting the way users are consuming the product. For example, uh, when uh, we are seeing a lot of work from home, so whenever we are engaging with the users, we look at in the daytime, notifications are having a high CTRs, but when in office, then we see after office like around 8 or 9 p.m. where we have a lot of uh, interactions coming in. So yeah, overall, we have seen that pandemic is changing the things. Again, uh, similarly, what we have seen is uh, when uh, cases or particular impact is more, so any, any uh, when we send in uh, uh, text to them related to, we call it relevance content, right? So when we are talking something about the COVID or COVID related things, when the cases are increasing, so that has a much more engagement compared to others. So, so we do adjust based on uh, how the pandemic is changing and based mm -hmm. on that changing user behavior and the consumption pattern. Uh, okay, so I guess you're adjusting towards depending on you know how, how it is, whether we enter the first wave, second wave, or even now third wave. Well, ho hopefully things will change um, to the better now, right? I mean, now that I think we're on the way to an endemic, so to say. Definitely. And it, it's it's very market specific. I mean, one yep. strategy doesn't work for all markets. Like, uh, And right. also the, the kind of audiences we have. So different market have a different audience base. For example, we mm -hmm. segregate into uh, user segments called pregnancy, baby users, users and stages. So each segment of what we call is the bucket of the users respond differently uh, to the to the pandemic situations as well. Okay, so depending on wh which stage of the pregnancy, like for example, where are they at? Okay, yes. all right. That that that's quite um, insightful, interesting, and a lot of work because I mean different regions, as you would have different, um, you know, the, the audience as as you mentioned, and the way they um, react is is all different. All right, all right. Um, so, uh, Julius, what about you? I'm sure it's the opposite, yeah, I think. Yeah. So, uh, when the pandemic started, we quickly realized that the priorities of our users uh, have shifted. 
And with Zilingo being a fashion and lifestyle business, we were negatively impacted by that. So there, were, uh, there was less demand for clothing and fabrics as people were now more interested in sourcing for PPEs and essential goods. So we had to like uh, pivot very fast and adapt. In terms of acquisition and retention, we shifted our marketing messaging and focus to align with that. So um, we had to stay like very relevant to survive and the same applies for the marketing messaging that we had. So be it an acquisition or a retention campaign, they have to be relevant to the demand of the times. And during that time, mm -hmm. uh, people did not just really like care much about um, lifestyle, passion and lifestyle. It was more of their health and the career situation. So uh, the demand was coming from uh, PPEs, coming from essential goods. So we've mm -hmm. had to uh, significantly adjust our marketing messaging as well, because okay. uh, going into the market with fashion and lifestyle messaging just did not work at that time. So again, uh, I think for us, the, the main consideration was to be like really relevant to our audience. Mm -hmm. Right. So you had to shift a little bit on what on on instead of fashion, like more towards uh, you can say everyday goods that they actually needed during this time, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. And I mean, just just wondering, right? Amongst all the channels that that are available or that were available, right? What what are the channels like these engagement tools, right? What is the channels that have proved to be most successful um, for your brand at, at this point in time? So, in terms of own media, we rely heavily on email, uh, push notifications, in app and web pop-ups, as well as okay. SMS and WhatsApp. So the effectiveness of these channels, um, of course, they vary widely depending on the type of uh, campaigns that we are running. Um, mm -hmm. It's not really like a one size fits all. Uh, you have to be flexible in selecting the right channel to activate. So for example, if we are trying to run a quick response campaign, then we definitely would tap into push, SMS and WhatsApp for that because that's where we get the, the fastest uh, response from the, the users. Right. But otherwise, you would use like email if the campaign is not like time sensitive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So I, mean, I guess you would see the, the user and, and accordingly, like, again, like you said, depending on the response that you need. And I think in this market, we, we have to agree that with push and WhatsApp, it's, it's the fastest response you will get. Right. Okay. Alcuna, okay. And, Kunal, what, what about you at Apparent Inc? I mean, if you talk about channels, right, would it be the same? Yeah, it's almost, almost the same. The, the How we differentiate it also based on, because we have a web and the app as well. And mm -hmm. also we have what we call new user acquisition from web to app or social to the app, right? So we do classify the users as existing users and the new users. And based on that, the channel vary because when you talk about the push notification, or whatever, it doesn't work, right? So when we are moving right. from web to app, is mainly the web push notification or onset messaging is what that works, right? And then when we are looking at the existing users, is either push notifications or in-app notifications, even emails, right? But the CTR on the emails for us is very low. Uh, the main thing that works for us is push notifications or in-app uh, push. That, that is giving us uh, good results. But for the new user acquisition, uh, we haven't seen a huge trend from web to app acquisition. But okay. again, we are learning the user behavior on uh, how to drive a user from just consuming the content onto the web and then mm -hmm. uh, putting them into the higher uh, end of the funnel and, and showing them what exactly they can get as a part of the app user as well. So yes, but as Julius was mentioning as well, you know, the channels are the same and each channel mm -hmm. have a different expectations, right? I mean, like push notification CTRs will be very different from when we talk about like web pushes, which have a much lower CTR, but each channel has it's a very unique purpose. And then even if, and so we try to maximize the output that we are getting from each channel. So you would still use all of these channels, but just depending on that particular use case and that, but at, at that particular time on what exactly you want to um, give out to, to your customers, right? Okay, so I, I think a combination of, of all of these channels would be something that uh, would, would be widely used. Yeah, yes. and, um, and Kunal, right? I mean, in your experience, like uh, how important is push notification as a channel to create a great onboarding experience and of course, retain them? 
any and any maybe you want to share some examples that you know you've been using to onboard and retain so i think uh, for us push notification is one of the key tool that we use to bring the user onto the app so just to give you an idea uh, we have 45% mau to push notification ratio so 45% okay. of the users are actually clicking push notification to come to the app so it's a very important tool for us and for some markets especially indonesia the number is sitting around 48 to 50% right okay. um, so so it's a very important tool for us so that's why we spend a lot of time in understanding the user behavior about best time to send uh, what is the higher chance of probability of them clicking the push notifications right so yeah that's what we are looking at and again uh, we try to optimize a lot of things from campaign to the flow and then uh, you know the predictive analysis to try to understand uh, all these parameters so building these funnels in order to improve the reachability so that's an important thing because we have seen a lot of challenges that we all our users are not reachable through push notifications right and being push notification as an important channel we want to increase a lot of i mean the percentage of users that are reachable through push notification should increase so we do a lot of campaigns and we call it push notification reachability right and the second part is that click through rate so if they are reachable why will they click it so it's a whole strategy about we kind of work on a hard limit like 5 to 6 push notification max per day across the markets right and then we play around with you know either some marketing or or our own product related so how we mix it up so increasing the probability of the user to click on it and then you know come to the app to have a higher dau and mm okay uh, that's good i i think that that's a good way to look at it i mean if your percentage is 45% that's a very high percentage i mean i guess for you it would be how to actually you know get more a uh, push notification um users and and then of course the click the click to rates yes okay. and an important thing is is how many what is the right number to send if you send way too many you, we have seen an uninstall rate is increasing right yeah. so and 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 also we have seen uh, there's a one important trend we have seen so uh sometimes we use the push notification for the brands as a marketing thing as well right mm -hmm. so so they click on it and they land onto something now uh what we have seen that have a very low ctr and we we do get some complaints from the users of getting that kind of a marketing uh push notification as well so we have to be very particular about how what we are sending to the to the users and also very small small things the icons that like if you are sending a reward push notification do we want to put the amount or no let's say if we put the amount the ctr goes down mm -hmm. but if we don't okay. put the amount of the reward they will win the ctr goes up so so there are a lot of small small uh, adjustments that we do based on the different user segments and then what is the ideal number of push notification to be sending and what time that whole mm -hmm. strategy plays a very important role in uh, in impacting our dau and mau okay so i guess you probably will be doing a lot of like frequency capping ab testing yes. um all of these kind of things to actually make sure that you know um whatever engagement is going out to the users when you like are, are properly like measured Yes, All definitely. Right. Interesting. Interesting. So a lot of pay attention to details, right? And you know, A/B testing. Definitely. Yeah, it's it's an all-time A/B testing going on uh, on the yeah. creatives, on the messaging, right? And and again, as you see, the the landscape changes because mm -hmm. uh, again, the pandemic situation changes the way the user are consuming. So then again, we have to adjust the whole right. uh, messaging that we are sending to the users to have. So if you see a dip, so what we realize is that you know. uh the trend line and if we see we are going down the trend line so we understand what is overall going on the app adjusting mm -hmm. to it so that we can come back to the trend line if you okay so it sounds like a lot of work but i mean it's it's been working for you so <laughs> that that that's good that's good and i i remember in a previous webinar i i i did I, and i mentioned i was like guys you know ab test everything you do because you know that that's the only way right to to get to know what exactly works for our users and and what um uh, would bring us better ctrs definitely right. right thanks for that kunal um uh julius i have a question for you right so i mean i, I know that you probably ha heavily using push notifications as well right so considering um in this market at least 40 to 70% of uh, some of the push notif notifications go undelivered this is as per research of course so i have for uh, customer engagement plans and any particular tactics do you um, apply to make up for this undelivered push pushes yeah. so for most of our evergreen campaigns um, we rely on the flow feature on moengage 
uh, for us to get in touch with our users on multiple channels. So it's mm -hmm. not just push that comes into play. Um, the flow feature ensures that we're able to reach them via other channels such as email or mm -hmm. um, SMS, as well as uh, a different uh, points in time. So for okay. ad hoc campaigns, we do consider like having a fallback channel um, mm -hmm. always. So especially for our retention campaigns wherein some users are not reachable uh, by push, then we make sure that a follow-up happens either by SMS and email. And when it comes to like the timing, uh, they don't have to like uh, come out at the mm -hmm. same time. In the flow, we're able to like manage the timings. Like if we send out the, the push and some users are not able to receive it, then uh, we sometimes like delay the send out of SMS and email so that to, to make sure that um, they don't go out all at the same time, so there's like a, a good timing to when these things are, our touch points happen. Okay, so you basically like mix around and create a whole omni-channel um, so, sort of user journey, right, where you mix all these channels okay. to, to make sure that, okay, I, I, I think, and, and that works, that works well for you? Yeah, yeah. So, all right. so to make sure that we cover all our bases. So if the user is not reachable by push, then we know that we have at least like reached that piece or the uh, the other channels like email. Mm -hmm. Right, makes sense. Right. So um, before I get to um, you know uh, last question that I have to ask you, I'm just checking here um, with the attendees. Um, you know if you have any questions or uh, maybe Kunal Julius, if you have questions for each other and then go ahead. Um, anything from the attendees? Just put it in the chat box. Right. Um, all right, so I think this goes out to, to the both of you, right? I mean, in, in terms of like, just, just generally, like what would you tell the audience here today? Like maybe you can share like some of the campaigns that you have done that has improved the retention of your customers. From Zilingo's side, um, we have like specific evergreen campaigns wherein, again, we use MoEngage uh, flow features to map mm -hmm. out the various like uh, user journeys. So one of that evergreen campaign is our purchase of soul journey. So in this journey, once the user makes a purchase, um, we activate multiple channels at different times to keep the relationship warm and keep us on top of mind until the next purchase. So in between the sales cycle, we are able to share with them like more information on our products and services that may be relevant to them. Or at the same time, we can also get like feedback from their last transaction, or we can share with them uh, ongoing promotions. So this helps us ensure that we're able to keep in touch with them in between the purchases and keep mm -hmm. our um, partner and partner retention healthy. Okay, so 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 you would say keeping in touch with them throughout the whole um, transaction funnel is is what would um, bring them back, so to say. Correct. Yeah, because especially for us, right, we're uh, a B two B business. The time mm -hmm. in between uh, the last purchase and the next purchase is mm -hmm. quite long. So it's not like B two C where in it could happen randomly within the thirty days. But for okay. us, the sales cycle because these are like bulk purchases, it could happen. Uh, 30 to 60 to uh, 90 days. So we take that into consideration as well. And within the time period, you also don't want to like spam um, your audience. So we are mindful mm -hmm. of the different touch points and communications that we send to them in between that purchase-to-purchase uh, -purchase period. Okay, okay. So still keeping a watch on you know how, how much you do it and, you know, and, the, and the time frame. Correct, yeah. Okay. Um, Kunal, what, what about what about you guys at Parent Inc? I mean, any, I, I mean, I know you shared some previously as well, but um, I mean, regarding the whole, you know, getting the users to actually uh, subscribe to push and then converting. But any other campaigns that you think has improved? I mean, the retention overall. So, so they were for us. I mean, uh, so we, we we have a laid out strategy for uh, from user acquisition to the retention part. Mm -hmm. So, so what we do is that. Uh, uh, when we are acquiring a user. So we look at from which channel we are acquiring the users and that information reported to MoEngage. And from there onwards, we call it onboarding campaigns. Okay, because okay. Uh, again, the, the biggest channel for us is that the user uninstalling the app within like two to three days of installing the app. So onboarding campaigns are really crucial for us. 
And one touch point that we have is from which campaign and which source we acquire the users. And on that one, we build all the onboarding campaign journey. So it's normally it's a two weeks thing. Okay. And it okay. depends on what kind of user, which bucket they come in and from where they come in. So we build this whole onboarding journeys for them in order to maximize the retentions and reducing the churn rates for them. So that's the onboarding. And after that, we put them in a bucket and then we look at, you know, the overall uh, push notification reachability to reach out to them through multiple campaigns. Again, I was mentioning you the whole strategy around it. Yeah. Again, we have two strategies that we look at. At the top of it is inactivity and uninstalls. Okay, so inactivity is, is when users are inactive for last, let's say 30 days, seven days, 14 days. So we look at all these inactivity campaigns. So again, as Julius was mentioning, flow is the way to go. So that's what we do. So we know that, you know, we are reaching out to the users. If users have not clicked off any of our push notification from last seven days, so then uh, they fall into a different flow and then inactivity, right? And if they're uninstalling yeah. it, then then again that, you know, how to we reach out them? We, we have the integrated retargeting campaigns inside mortgage. So let's say we know they are not reaching out on push notification, then we try to retarget them on the social media platforms or the email campaigns that we have. So it's, it's a fully integrated approach and I think that each component is a key to have the higher retentions, reducing the churn rate, and uh, keeping the uh, keeping user coming back to the app. They be for us. Right. So from you know, you, so you would say from onboarding to inactivity, and you know that's basically increasing the entire lifetime value of your, your customers. Will then you know help you um, you know have, have help you reduce the churn and of course increase retention in that sense. Definitely. And yeah. that, that's what we look at all the time. So running right. a campaign, uh, I mean, uh, even if you acquired a good quality user, but we are unable to reach out to them or provide them the information at the right time. So we do see a churn. So that's where this mm -hmm. on onboarding campaigns comes in. And when we, so we roll out a lot of new features as well. Right. Mm -hmm. And these things are very, very important for us to educate the people about what kind of features are coming in. And that may be one of the reason that they will come on the app. So again, uh, the way for us, the, when the user move from one bucket to another bucket, let's say from pregnancy to baby, so mm -hmm. we have a churn rate. Okay, so people don't continue; they they uninstall the app, right? So those are also very crucial areas for us. When when we see a user is moving from one stage to other stage, then we have all these campaigns to make sure that you know we don't lose the users in that uh, movement mm -hmm. of stage one stage to another stage. Yeah. So it's a it's a integrated approach to to reach out to the users to improve the key KPIs that we have. Yeah. Okay, right. Very insightful and, and makes complete sense, right? I mean, you, you have to look at the whole integrated from your users where they are in the funnel and actually like, I mean, like you said, in their pregnancy stage or even um, where they are in the buying stage right there in the onboarding or if they're still, um, you know, they haven't come to the platform for over 20 or 30 days. And then, yes, it's a whole different approach for the different funnels, I, I would say, Definitely. right? That's, that's very insightful, Kunal and Julius. Thank you so much. And um, I hope that you know, we, we've helped um, you know, with your advice with these attendees. Guys, from the attendees, any questions or any, any questions for anyone before we go to the next session where we'll just have a quick um, demo of, of the dashboard on how we can do this on More Engage, right? How do we um, help you retain um, users, uh, retain and onboard users on, on the dashboard? Okay, all right. I guess then if no questions, I'd like to invite um, Fernando Academia, Customer Success Manager at MoEngage to showcase a, a, just a, a quick walkthrough on the MoEngage dashboard. Um, Julius and Kunal, thank you so much for doing this for us. I mean, you can feel free to stay or um, you can leave. Thank you so much again. Um, hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll catch up soon in person. Thank you, Divya, for inviting us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Divya. Thanks, Julius. It's Fernando, over to you. All right, thank you very much, Divya. So let me share my screen quickly. Here you go. Can you see my screen now? Hi there, can you see my screen now? 
Yes. All right. Awesome. So here we go for our quick demo for today. I'll be showing you how to use this uh, or how you create uh, push notification campaigns and uh, probably giving some uh, use cases as well along the way. So for the interest of time, uh, I'll run through quickly the whole dashboard. So on the left side of the screen here are the uh, modules that you can probably access. Of course, the main dashboard where you can see the key metrics, the analyze portion where you have the analytics, the segments, then uh, the meat of the software is the engagement where you can create your campaigns. So let's proceed to create a push notification campaign for you. In the, in the interest of time, I created a draft. So we can proceed directly to the draft that I created for you. Again, we go to comp how we do that. We go to campaigns, then we go to create campaign. Then we click push. There are three kinds of push notifications that we have for more engaged. First is, first type would be the one-time push notifications. These are the notifications you would want to send. For example, you have one day special offer or a flash sale, or you just want to remind or announce something about your company to your users. So this is where one-time push notification campaigns can come in. You can also schedule this for one-time campaigns like, for example, a, a Valentine's Day or the upcoming April Fool's Day and many more. The next type is periodic. It's, uh, this is the type of campaign that you use to, if you have recurring uh, campaigns that you would want to run regularly, for example, you would want to remind your users to pay their bills every 15th or 30th of the month or whatever date are, uh, the, their salaries are released. So, or for example, you would want to push uh, campaigns on a regular basis, say every seven days, just to make sure that uh, you keep your communications with them warm. So that can be an option as well. Another is event triggered. So event triggered push notifications are sent uh, every time a user does something on your app on, or, your, or on your website. So for example, uh, you would, if they uh, place something on their cart and you would want to uh, reward them with a discount coupon, for example, or just would want to send a free shipping voucher for them, you can send that push notifications or that push notification can be triggered. And there can be a lot of options here as well. Um, next would be the device triggered. It's somewhat similar to the event triggered push notification campaigns, but these are most likely for the time sensitive campaigns that you would want to send out because this takes a more battery and uh, it saves inside the device of the user. For example, this can be campaigns that you would want to send out or schedule out for them, even if they are offline. So again, uh, these are we recommend that these are, will be used for more time sensitive information. Then last type would be location triggered, or you can also call this the geofence. For example, you would want to, if you are a financial institution, for example, and you have branches across or all over Asia, and your uh, user visits another country or leaves the country, you can trigger some notifications or uh, you can do uh, some location-based campaigns for them. Or if they go to hotspots for tourists or they go to hot spots with uh, some kind of a festival, you can also do that as well. So that's the kinds of push notifications that we can send out. Again, uh, for the interest of time, I made some drafts for you so I can explain better the whole uh, push notification campaign and how you can do it for your, your company. In this case, uh, the demo account is e-commerce and this is how you create your campaigns. Of course, we have to name the campaign. In this case, I named it push notifications demo. Then you can also add uh, campaign tags or sometimes the leadership would want to categorize a particular campaign depending on their KPIs. You can do that as well by assigning tags to your campaigns. For example, you would want an onboarding campaign or a promotional. In this example, I use promotional. 
then uh, this is what uh, this is one of the features that uh, we're really proud of in more engaged the segmentation there can be a, a more advanced segmentation we can do but that can be a webinar for uh, for some other time for example if uh, as our guests today mentioned that it is really crucial and it depends on uh, their messaging and sometimes their means to message depends on the customer journey or the life cycle of their users. And that's why we want to respect that by making sure that we send out relevant and timely campaigns to the users who need it most or to the users who would probably benefit from it. So in this case, for example, uh, I think it was Dilingo who mentioned or I think it was Kunal who mentioned that uh, they they uh, do track if users have not engaged with them for 30 days, and we, perhaps you would want to to send retargeting campaigns to them or the engagement campaigns to them. We can do that by segmenting them here. Example for their user behavior, they have not opened the site at least one time in 30 days, and so they will be uh, the main recipients of this campaign. We can also add uh, add more filters and segmentation. In this case, uh, for example, you would, for a, a different campaign or for the same campaign, you would want users who purchase or you would want to target the top 10% of your users who purchase in the last 30 days. That can also be done. Of course, uh, for the sake of example, this may not necessarily go together, but uh, it's just for me to share with you that this can be done. Also, uh, after the retargeting or with the retargeting rather, we can add more filters and also we, uh, we, can, uh, we can exclude users. So, and we have those options here as well. One of the thing I may have missed is the user property where you can directly segment the users depending on their attributes or say their last known city, their last known country, or how they interact usually with your campaigns, and many more, depending on how you set it up. And you can also use custom segments that you use regularly. In this case, uh, you can select them if you have saved them beforehand. There you go. Then, of course, we want to identify the target platforms here, Android, iOS, and web. Then one of the things mentioned also a while ago was con uh, control groups and frequency capping. In this case, I'll run through this quickly. Control groups are those who, who we don't want to receive the campaigns because we want to measure the efficacy of our campaigns. Global ones are those that are, uh, it's somehow we, uh, we set aside a certain percentage of our audience who do not receive our campaigns, just so we notice how effective the campaigns are compared to those uh, who do not receive them. I hope that makes sense. And then, uh, of course, they, they're all, there can also be a campaign-specific control group. You don't want to send a specific campaign to a certain group, even if they match the criteria you set here on your segmentation. In this example, I just uh, used the global control group. And there are also other things we can control for our push notification campaigns. For the content, um, of course, we can do custom content for Android, iOS, and web, and each of them asks for some different uh, details and some nuances on the platform. So again, uh, in this case, I already typed in the notifications I would want to send. So it's a notification, it's a promotion. Then the message title is enjoy 10% off. You see this line of code, I'll delete, I'll delete this for now. Because we value the per personalization in our messaging, we can also do that for our push notifications. In this case, we just uh, click the at sign, then select the attribute we, will, we would want to put there. So you might want to put first name. But what if users do not have that on their attributes yet? You can also add a fallback text. For example, we use more engagers. Then uh, we can see the preview here. And if we click this button here, we can see the customized preview. So this is our title text, then more engagers as the fallback. But if I am registered here, 
my name will be displayed. And so much more. Of course, we can add buttons. We can add links. We can add coupons as well. One of the key things our guests mentioned also a while ago was A-B testing. And that's also very much possible with our uh, with, uh, with more engaged. So again, I'll run through this quickly. iOS, there are some custom uh, fields here that we have to fill in, but they are more likely the same. For web, there are, will be some of these fields that we have to fill up too. All right. Then we go to that A-B testing. Uh, Can add a variation here for these uh, notifications that we would want just so we can test out different subject lines, different headings, different messaging for our campaigns. One of the things I might have missed uh, sharing earlier is about the template. We have a few options that we can choose from here. First one is the basic, or this is the usual, this would be the default look of your notifications on your phone. But we can also edit that, or we can also choose stylized basic, where we can change uh, font color, we can put some text in bold or italics and put some emojis there. More customization options, I should say. Then also, uh, we can also use, simple image carousels where we can put in slides of images that could uh, that can either be your slideshow for your upcoming promos and whatnot. And before I end, I'll just have to run through quickly some of the settings that you would, might want to check out as well. So in our settings tab, we have the push here. Then if you go there, you can customize the logos that appears on your web notification and some other settings. I will highlight this part. For web notifications, uh, we can do one-click opt-in where once you visit the site, there will be a pop-up on the upper right corner, usually of the Google Chrome tab, asking you to, if you would want to allow the notifications. And th that's how it, look like. it looks like here. But again, uh, we would want to maximize the opportunity to get them to subscribe or to get them into our into our system. So other than just letting them, because if they miss this notification and they click block, we won't able to reach them anymore until or unless they uninstall the Google Chrome or they clear their cache. So a workaround there is that we provide the two-step opt-in where users will be shown this notification first when they click that, they'll be shown the default notification from the browser you're using. So I think uh, those are the most of the things I, I should discuss. Of course, uh, before I forget, we have to, we have the frequency capping because we don't want users to get too much of uh, push notifications. And we can also prioritize what notifications should come first. We can also throttle so that we don't, uh, we make sure that all of our push notifications are sent. So I guess uh, those are the most important things I can fit in in our short time to, to show you the demo of our push notification or, or of our push campaigns. If you have questions, you may ask them as well. Uh, back to you, Divya. Thank you, Fernando. That was very insightful. I hope, um, I hope the audience found it insightful as well. Um, any questions? Just leave it there for a minute. Right then, I guess we have no questions. I think that was clear enough. Um, 
Thank, thank you, you so much, much yes. Fernando. Um, I, I see Julius is still here. Thank you so much, Julius. And of course, thanks to all the attendees, the attendees who joined us today for this masterclass. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you.